Jaden Ivey has crazy potential. After being a very highly touted prospect coming out of college, so far early on into the season this year, Ivey has been playing pretty well. And although he's putting up pretty good numbers, that's not really what I'm basing my assessment off of, of why I think Ivey has crazy potential. It's more based upon the way he's playing. But quickly, before we get the video started, for those of you who may not know, I'm Juicy Sports, I make opinionated NBA content, and if you guys enjoy videos similar to this, hit that subscribe button, that like button, button and that post notification bell. I also want to quickly mention that I recently started up an MMA channel and if you guys are interested in that the link will be in the description but anyways let's get into it. Jaden Ivey was drafted with the number 5 overall selection during the 2022 NBA draft by the Detroit Pistons. And originally when Jaden was drafted, especially towards the tail end of the draft process, teams were clamoring over Jaden Ivey. And specifically the New York Knicks who had a later pick in that year's draft wanted to trade up for Jaden Ivey desperately. But of course they weren't able to do so and he was drafted by the Pistons. But nonetheless, a bunch of different teams were extremely high in Ivey and were very excited to see what he can do in the long term future. But when Ivy was drafted to the Pistons specifically, people were very excited to see how the backcourt of Cade Cunningham and Jaden would pair up together. And so far, although Ivy isn't putting up incredible, incredible numbers so far early on into his rookie season, he's definitely playing very, very well. But on the season, Ivy's averaging 16 points per game on 42% shooting from the field, 4.9 rebounds, and 4.3 assists. Certainly very good numbers for a rookie. But the question is, why am I so excited about Ivy's potential future growth? Well, of of course, as I mentioned, those numbers are certainly pretty good, but they're nothing incredible or off the charts. So the reason why I'm extremely excited about him is based on how he's playing on the court, and when you watch him, how he appears. Ivy, in my opinion, looks like one of those guys that are just extremely explosive once driving all the way to the basket, and very difficult to stop. Once driving all the way to the basket, Ivy does a great job at either A, dunking over you with that crazy athleticism that he does possess, or B, he's able to finish around you with crafty layups, either his left or right hand. He also does a pretty nice job at finishing through contact, which is something that's extremely important. Once you're a player that's that good, once driving to the basket, you're going to get fouled a ton. So if you're able to finish through contact as well, that's very important. But the buck doesn't stop there with Ivy. He's not only a player that can drive all the way to the basket. He also has a pretty nice mid-range game with a nice floater once driving to the basket. He also has a nice catch and shoot mid-range jump shot, crossover, sidestep, step back. And basically from that mid-range area, Ivy has a lot of different individual skills. But from that three-point range, Ivy also has a decent three-point jump shot as well. On this season, Ivy's only shooting around 32% from deep, which of course isn't good whatsoever. But when you consider how his jump shot form looks and how he shoots it in certain games, I certainly think he's a pretty decent three-point shooter and he's going to be fine going forward long term. And this is something that we see a lot with players of Ivy's archetype. Players that are extremely talented once driving all the way to the basket and are just extremely athletic typically don't have a great three-point jump shot. And of course, in terms of percentage, Percentage, Ivy seems like he's the same player. But in my opinion, I think he could be a little bit better of a three point jump shot shooter than some of these other guys. And besides his individual scoring ability, Ivy also does a pretty nice job at facilitating out there, even if he's playing that shooting guard position. Now, in my opinion, I see Ivy as a point guard, but when you're playing with Cade Cunningham, you're probably going to play off ball a little bit, and Ivy has proven the ability to do so from time to time. But in terms of the long term future, I would like to see Ivy have the ball in his hands a little bit more. Now, it's going to be tough to do so on the the Pistons considering they do already have Cade Cunningham, but maybe you have him come off the bench or maybe you even trade him down the road for a pretty nice return if you're the Pistons. I guess we'll see what happens going forward with that. But now the question is, what kind of long-term expectations would I have for Ivy? Do I think he can be a superstar type guy, an all-star type guy, or something just a little bit less than that? Well, in my opinion, just solely based off where he was drafted and the expectations that he had going into the draft, I think the bare minimum expectation for Ivy should be an all-star type guy. But when you consider how he's been playing so far early on into the season and the type of archetype that he possesses with that crazy explosive nature that he does have, I would certainly raise my expectations to a legitimate all-star for Jaden Ivey in the long-term future. And what I mean by a legitimate all-star is a player that makes the all-star game basically every single season. Because there's certain players out there that are borderline all-stars where they make the all-star team for a season, two, maybe even three, but for the most part, they don't make the all-star team. And they're just not mainstays in the all-star team. 
team. But for a player like Ivy, I would expect him to make it more seasons than he doesn't throughout his NBA career. Now, some of you may be saying a player that makes the all-star team basically every single season would be considered a superstar type player. And yeah, of course, there certainly are certain guys that are, but I certainly don't think you need to be considered a superstar just because you make the all-star team basically every single season. I think there's a little bit of a gap between those two. And I guess in the long-term future, I could see Ivy getting to that superstar type level. Of course, it's a possibility, but at this point, I just feel like it's too early. I think a fair level of expectation for Ivy based upon all that he's done early on into his NBA career thus far would be a legitimate all-star type player. Now, of course, there's a possibility he never lives up to those expectations, but at this point, I am certainly confident he would be able to. Now, I will say things are going to need to change with this current situation. I don't know how easy it would be for him to get to that level if he's playing with Cade Cunningham throughout the rest of his career. Of course, it is possible we have seen point guard duos in the past work well together, but I just think Ivy needs the ball in his hands a little bit more rather than not. But now the question is, what are my personal expectations for the Detroit Pistons going forward long term? Well, in my opinion, I don't think the Pistons are going to be anywhere near the playoffs for two seasons, meaning the rest of this season and all of next season. I think those two years are going to be used to really build the young players they already have on the roster while also trying to make some good trades, also trying to make some good pickups in free agency, and also trying to draft effectively. But I think after that, the Pistons will then be able to legitimately compete for the playoffs, meaning they would be a 6th through 8th seed in the Eastern Conference. And going forward from there, then you would see legitimate progress from Detroit. Let's just say for the sake of the video, they're able to make the 8th seed in 2 seasons from now, then the year after that, I would expect them to get a little bit better, then a little bit better, then a little bit better. One thing that I will say is the young core that they currently have, of course, wouldn't be able to win a championship, at least most likely. Of course, players could improve significantly, and maybe they will have enough on the roster in 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 years, whatever it ends up being, but I just think the Pistons need to make a lot more moves in order to get there. But of course, we're talking about something that's 5, 6, 7, 8 seasons away. Of course, they have a ton of time to figure things out, draft effectively, get the right players in free agency, develop the young talent that they already have on the roster, make the right trades, and just do all these little things that turn your team into a legitimate championship contender. Because at this point, it's pretty clear that the Pistons are very early on into the rebuild process, so you just have to be very patient with these guys. But one thing I will say is I am extremely excited to see what the Pistons can do going forward long term, because I really do like a lot of different players they have in their young core, specifically Jaden Ivey and Cade Cunningham. I'm very excited to see what those two can do going forward long term. But I guess we'll see what happens now not only with the Detroit Pistons, but also Jaden Ivey long term as well. But anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you think Jaden Ivey could potentially turn into an all-star type guy, or do you not think so? But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did enjoy, check one of these two videos popping up now. And until the next time, peace out guys.